I don't know about you, but I didn't come to give a speech. I came to go to church. Thank you to the, uh, to the Navy band. This is Navy week in Tampa. We were hoping to get the Blue Angels to do a flyby, but I'd rather have the Navy band here. And so thank you to all the Navy personnel that are here. To this amazing city of Tampa gospel choir. Now we're talking. And in case you missed it, Council Member Guido Maniscalco. He was the guy going this way when they were going that way. <laughs> to all of you, thank you for joining me today. This is an exciting day for our community. I will try not to keep you long. I know it is hot. Uh, but this is an important day for us. You know, my wife is here, and I told her earlier this week, honey, I'm sorry I, I haven't been around very much. I haven't been able to run through them all at the last minute to buy you a Mother's Day gift. So I built you a $35 million park. <laughs> you know, this stage is not normally what we build for this event. But we have a, an amazing group that is coming to play uh, tomorrow night, a group that, whose name I have struggled with for the last couple of weeks. I kept referring them to the three blind men. Um, clearly, that is why I hire hipsters around me. So Third Eye Blind is responsible for all of this, and we appreciate that. To the city staff that is here today that helped make this all possible, to the elected officials that are in the audience today. Would the elected officials please stand up so that you can be recognized as well? <laughs> to the contractors that have worked on this site for over two years, if there is anybody out here today that has worked on this site, I want you to stand up so that you can get a round of applause as well. Kimmen, Skanska, Civitas. And to our parks and recreation employees, this is, your, this is your project. You have been out here. I have been hounding you. I've been riding you. Every Sunday, I would sneak through that hole in the fence and come out here and violate every OSHA rule in the book. No hard hat, no boots, but I was checking on the work, and you did an amazing job amazing job and to all the sponsors that helped make this weekend possible to Norma Jean Likes whose generous contribution has allowed us to do some benches and some shade structures to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and I see Darcy Glazier here Darcy thank you for being here <laughs> to the Tampa Bay Rays who are here as well And to my friend and your friend, the guy that's going to bring us the Stanley Cup this year. The mayor needs a ring. Jeff and Penny Vinnick, thank you for all that you do for this community. The last guy to host that Stanley Cup up above his head was our captain, Dave Andrichuk. David, stand up. Thank you. And Steve Griggs, the CEO of the Lightning, thank you for all that the sports teams in this community do. You are part of our DNA. We love you. We want you to succeed. And we want to win that Stanley Cup. So go get them tonight, guys. Go get them. You know, as all of you have seen, I use this State of the City speech to highlight structures and locations that represent our amazing history and tell a story about Tampa, but are uniquely positioned to undergo a transformation and a rebirth. From Curtis Hickson to the Crest Building, from Tampa Armature to Fort Homer Hesterly Armory, we have told the story of struggle, of sacrifice, of joy, 
of triumph and of setback. Yet through it all, Tampa, like those buildings, stood strong. An ever-present reminder of the words of urbanist Jane Jacobs, cities have the capability of providing something for everybody, only because and only when they are being created by everybody. It's been an interesting year to say the least, but as we stand here today at the opening of this spectacular new park that will be the catalyst for the revitalization of West Tampa and the North Hyde Park area, and I'm so happy to see Ruth McNair here who has struggled for many, many years. Stand up, Ruth. <laughs> Ruth has been the president of the North Hyde Park For years, Ruth has told me we can do better. Ruth, this is for you. Congratulations. But this area, like this park, has stood in the shadows for decades. Now, this park will stand as a testament to the commitment of this city to ensure that that rising tide of prosperity floats all boats. It signals the beginning of the renaissance of West Tampa and the anchor of the West River Redevelopment Project that we broke ground on yesterday just a few blocks from here with our partners at the Tampa Housing Authority. This 150-acre project will change the face of historic West Tampa and create a mixed-use neighborhood focused on the Hillsborough River. There will come a day when you can start at Bayshore Boulevard and choose which side of the river you recreate on. This park was not cheap, but nothing done well ever is. It took courage on the part of our city council to invest the dollars necessary to build this. They are be, to be commended, and I would like all of them, Councilman Cohen, Councilman Miranda, Councilman Vieira, and Councilmember Maniscalco to stand up and take a bow for having the courage to do it right. Fifty years from now, they won't be able to tell you who built this park. But they will remember that somebody had the foresight and the political courage to do what needed to be done. It's worthy to note the history of the land that we sit on now. At one time, this was known as Roberts City, after the opening of the J.W. Roberts Cigar Factory, which opened in 1909. From 1936 to 1967, this area was also the location of Phillips Field home to the University of Tampa's football team, and the site of Middleton and Blake high school football games. Due to urban renewal, the neighborhood was torn down, and in 1972, this land was acquired by the city. The planning for the park began in 1972 and was completed and opened to the public as Riverfront Park on July 4, 1977, at a cost of Get this, $1.5 million. The turf you're sitting on costs more than $1.5 million. Those were the days. It was later named in honor of Mayor, mayor Julian B. Lane, the 48th mayor of Tampa, whose family is here to join us today in this celebration. With the Lane family and all of the extended family members, please stand up. Mayor Lane served at a particularly challenging time in our city as Tampa integrated its schools for the first time and also for the first time worked closely with the biracial committee to integrate peacefully our downtown businesses like the Woolworths lunch counter. The Woolworths lunch counter, which we are going to recognize later this week, was the site of sit-ins largely organized by students at Blake and Middleton High School. The lunch counter where Clarence Fort and Arthenia Joyner sat down as young students and went to jail so that others could stand up altered the course of history in this community. Clarence and Arthenia, it's time to stand up again.
Even then, this city understood that in our diversity, we're stronger. That a city divided could not succeed. Sons and daughters of cigar workers, alongside sons and daughters of longshoremen, joined in a common effort. I tell you all, that as you heard from this choir, we've come from a mighty long way. It's not been without its ups and downs, its fits and its starts. We have seen our share of defeats, but always we rise. And look, look at us now. Just look at us now. Our journey for the last seven years has prepared us for this moment. Through the worst of the Great Recession, we showcased Tampa to the world by hosting the Republican National Convention. We stood up, moving unemployment from 10.5% to the lowest in the state at 3.8%. We stood up. Attracting new airline flights from all over the world to our newly renovated airport, we stood up. Hosting Bollywood, the College Football National Championship, the NHL All-Star Game, we stood up. Creating an economy where three out of the last seven years, we led the state. We led the state in the number of new jobs created. And now we lead the state in the number of high-tech jobs that are available. We stood up. We also rank as one of the top cities in the country for STEM jobs being created. Yes, there was Irma, and yes, there was a killer. But through it all, we never stopped believing in each other. And yes, we stood up. Let me take a moment to recognize some neighborhood leaders who in that dark moment, during those long 51 days and nights, stood side by side with the Tampa Police Department. Leaders in Southeast Seminole Heights and Hampton Terrace who never wavered, who never backed down, who refused to let evil win, who epitomized what it means to be Tampa strong. Stand up. You were there with us every step of the way. They never quit on Chief Dugan. They never quit on the men and women who were out there every day. They never quit. Thank you for epitomizing what Tampa Strong means. You know, every day as I travel this city, I'm reminded of what is good about this place we call home. It's a special place. It makes me proud to see that sense of hope from New Tampa to Ballast Point, from Sulphur Springs to Seminole Heights. There is a sense of pride in what Tampa's becoming. We're not perfect. In fact, we're far from it. There are still fiscal challenges that are looming. The economic impact from the Great Recession has been long and deep. In fact, last year was the first year since 2007 that property tax revenues got back to 2007 numbers. Let me say that again. Last year was the first year since 2007 that our property tax revenues got back to the levels of 10 years ago. The cumulative loss over the last 10 years as a result of the recession was $473 million. And yet we do the same job better than we've ever done it with 700 less people, more efficient, more practical, doing a job as well as the city has ever done it. Now, over the next couple years, we're going to continue to face financial pressure. And that is compounded by an outright attack on local government by leadership in the Florida legislature. I've been around government, city government for 30 years. And I've never seen such a blatant attack to undermine local government and to strip away the powers of self-governance. It's wrong. And it needs to stop. It's not all of them, but it's a lot of the leadership. And you can vote against those that vote against you. During the campaign season, they run around talking about their conservative principles, how less government is better, how smaller government is more efficient, how government closest to the people is the best government. Well, guess who the hell that is? That's us. That's us.
They say that until we do something to protect the rights of our gay friends and neighbors or stand up in the face of, face of Islamophobia or want to pass a tree ordinance that reflects Tampa's unique canopy or, God forbid, want to pass common sense gun legislation. Then they say, oh, no, we know better. We know what's good for you. We're going to decide for you. Tallahassee know better? Are you kidding me? Not now, not ever. Let us do our jobs. This is the same legislature that pays a lot of attention to the NRA and very little attention to the PTAs. Not all of them. A group of advocates for AR-15s but deniers of climate change. Here with us today is one of those young people that you saw in that video leading the march to pass common sense gun legislation. It's high school students that organized that march who told the country that this was not just a moment, this was a movement, that enough was enough. It's no difference than a young Clarence Ford or a young Arthenia Joyner who sat down and marched so that others could vote. Brooke Shapiro and her peers marched so others can live. We can do better. Brooke, stand up. You make us proud every day. <laughs> Plan High School senior headed for Yale in the fall. Brooke, go get your education and come home. This country needs you, Brooke. In spite of this, as we sit here today, on this occasion, I couldn't be more excited about what lies ahead for Tampa. All around us, this community is growing and prospering. From new recreational facilities in New Tampa to new houses in East Tampa. From the redevelopment of the West River and the revitalization of historic West Tampa to the explosive growth downtown anchored by Jeff's Water Street project that will reshape our city as we know it. From the new restaurants in Seminole Heights and Tampa Heights to the new homes in Sulphur Springs. There is a new sense of optimism, a sense of destiny, a belief that our best days are yet to come. New jobs, new corporate relocations, and thousands of young people who are flocking to our city to be a part of this special place that we call Tampa. Instead of a city that exports its talent to other places, we have become a talent importer. No longer or our children having to leave, for Tamp leave Tampa for Charlotte or Austin. Now they are coming home and they're bringing their friends with them. But I also recognize that not everyone enjoys the benefits of our progress yet. That is why last year, standing in front of many of you, I announced a new initiative, Autism Friendly Tampa. It was a commitment from me to those touched by autism and their families that the city was gonna make a concerted effort to ensure that you have the same opportunities to enjoy all that Tampa has to offer. One in every 68 individuals is affected by autism. Each person touched by autism has their own unique challenges. Today, because of Autism Friendly Tampa, more than 2,700 city employees have been equipped with the training and education to better understand those challenges, to be an accepting and a calming force for those who may have felt at times that a visit to the park would have been too overwhelming, or that finding a camp for their son or daughter was impossible. Now they know when they sign their kids up for a summer camp, our staff has an awareness and an appreciation of the needs of the kids facing autism. When you visit a park, we have developed experience stories housed right on our website so you can know and review what to expect at the Riverwalk or at Curtis Sixon Park or Perry Harvey Park. Thanks to a Disney grant, we now have a new sensory friendly playground being installed in New Tampa, Al Lopez and Tacoma Trail. By June 1st, those improvements will be open and ready for play. It doesn't end in our parks and youth programs. 100% of our first responders have completed the autism friendly training and are now outfitted with visual communication cards to better help with those who have difficulty commuting verbally, especially in high stress situations. And I've appointed an autism friendly advisory board, a cross section of professionals, parents, 
and those affected by autism to help guide the city as we grow and continue to shift our culture. A special word of thanks to Councilmember Luis Vieira, whose family has been touched by autism, who has been an advocate for those who have been touched by autism and their families. Lewis, thank you for fighting the fight. <laughs> this progress has only been possible thanks to our partners at the Center of Autism and Related Diseases and Disabilities who work alongside our city staff to accomplish this. You know, when Tampa sees a problem, we face it head on. Even when the solutions aren't easy, we know that our investment in our core infrastructure will pay dividends for future chapters of this great city. This is how we faced our stormwater issues. Stormwater is no surprise to all of us. Flooding from an afternoon rain is not part of the quality of life that we want. We are making, thanks to the support of the city council, the largest investment in our stormwater system that this city has ever seen. Over 135 miles of pipe and 10,000 inlets were inspected and cleaned in the last year. More than 600 tons of debris has been removed from the outfalls and the pipes. Pipes, inlets, and ditches that have not been cleaned or maintained in decades because we didn't have the money are now back to operating at full capacity. And that's just the start. Over the next two years, more than $70 million in projects are scheduled to be completed, further maximizing our current stormwater infrastructure and investing in new capital projects where we need them. But planning for our future also means dealing with water. We need innovation, innovative and transformative solutions to address our unprecedented growth that we are experiencing. One of those issues is water and the availability of water. The Tampa Augmentation Project, otherwise known as TAP, is a groundbreaking project that will sustain our water needs and the needs of our region for decades to come. We've had a great ally in the Florida Legislature and Dana Young. Dana, thank you for being there for us on the water issue. <laughs> Today, the city of Tampa discharges more than 50 million gallons of almost drinkable, highly treated water into the Hillsborough Bay every day. It's been great for the Bay, but just imagine what we could do with that water to replenish the aquifer and repair the environment. Through TAP, this reclaimed water, a valuable resource that could be additionally purified and made even safer, could be a sustainable regional drinking source. TAP is critical to the Tampa Bay region. If fully implemented, TAP can provide millions of gallons of water a day to the city and to the region and relieve pressure on groundwater sources, all the while improving the health of the environment of Sulphur Springs and the lower Hillsborough River. When we are finished, TAP will be a model for the nation as we show how we can design and implement alternative water supplies. We cannot wait until we have needs that we cannot meet. Tampa is leading on water. We're embracing the science and laying the groundwork for new water supplies that take the pressure off the environment and are completely sustainable. You know, in the course of my seven years as the mayor, I've seen the city shine a light on darkness in the most trying times. Stay and play is a light still shining for the kids of Tampa. Every year, its light shines brighter. Since the summer of 2015, when we introduced, introduced Stay and Play, there have been more than 175,000 visits by children in some of our tougher neighborhoods. And every year the program grows. We had 10,000 more visits last year than we had the previous summer. And this summer too, seven days a week, open till midnight, kids in some of our tougher neighborhoods will have a safe place to just be kids to not worry about being victims of random gunshots, to not be just seduced by the streets and the gangs, a place to meet mentors or to hear a guest, to learn a sport, a music production, a place to just be a kid. Now, time and time again, when asked what is the most pressing issue facing our community, 
our residents say transportation and traffic congestion. We have failed to provide so solutions for too long. It is far beyond the time for tangible change. We're working hard at planning for the extension and modernization of the streetcar. We've been out in your neighborhoods hearing your thoughts on reimagining that asset, an asset that has been overlooked for too long. A modern streetcar with reliable and frequent service can connect our urban core to its surrounding neighborhoods, a real transportation solution to downtown congestion, and an option for those who live or work downtown. In the future, the streetcar will have the potential to reach even further, branching into the core communities that house the jobs and the schools and the destinations that people come from and to. But we're not stopping there. We're exploring new and emerging technologies every day to find out what works for Tampa. Earlier this year, we created a new division, Smart Mobility, within our transportation and stormwater systems to focus on deploying 21st century methods and technologies to modernize our infrastructure. This team will continue to work as a city as a laboratory approach and work with our public, private, and academic partners to test next generation solutions to ease transportation issues, traffic congestion, and foster sustainable infrastructure. In conjunction with the new partnership with the University of South Florida, Tampa was accepted into the Metro Lab Collaborative dedicated to urban innovation. We have worked with our regional partners, including our cities, counties, and community groups to form the Tampa, Tampa Bay Smart Cities Alliance. Transportation will remain our Achilles heel until we elect people that are serious about finding solutions. It's all about mobility options. It's about giving the consumer choices. It's not just one option, it's many. It's HOV lanes, a far more robust bus system that is attractive to riders of necessity as well as riders of choice. It's bus rapid transit, it's ride sharing services, and eventually it's autonomous vehicles. And yes, it includes rail. Now I know that there are some who think rail is a UN plot. And now I know those trolls are firing up their laptops now to start cranking out those anonymous comments on the internet. But the reality is, for the urban core, rail is part of the solution. Part of the solution, not the solution, part of the solution. But without a dedicated revenue source, none of this is possible. Without an opportunity to vote for ourselves, whether we choose to tax ourselves, none of this is possible. Denying us a vote is to deny us our future. It's time to let us vote. We can figure it out ourselves. We don't need the county commission to tell us what we can and can't do. We can figure it out ourselves. Now we continue to work with our partners in St. Pete, in Clearwater, Hillsborough County, and Pasco County, recognizing that as a region, our strengths far outnumber our weaknesses, and that our combined assets dwarf our liabilities. When St. Pete succeeds, Tampa benefits. Whether it was our combined effort to attract Amazon HQ2, or whether it was Mayor Christmas' courageous decision to allow the Tampa Bay Rays to look in Hillsborough and Pinellas. We are in this together. We grow our regional assets. We protect our regional assets. The Rays are our regional assets. We are in this together. Never again, never again, So those, shall those bridges be looked upon as barriers, but instead be looked upon as conduits to cooperation. We are in this together. Tampa Bay, Pasco, Hillsborough, we market as, as a region, we compete as a region, we are stronger as a region, and we will remain as a region, and we will not denigrate each other. We will work together to build a more prosperous community. But you know something? It's in places like this where we sit today, in neighborhoods like this, in parks like this, where we find common ground. It's where Councilman Frank Reddick used to come to play basketball. Places where kids can be kids, 
and families can make memories. Fields of competition where legends are born and rivalries are created. Where stories of prowess on the sporting fields leads to spirited conversations in barbershops on Main Street and reunions 50 years later. Blake versus Middleton. Plant versus Robinson. Jefferson versus Hillsboro. Common ground. Parks are the places where people from different neighborhoods and different cultures meet on common ground. Different religions. Different orientations on common ground. Weddings. Bar mitzvahs. Family reunions on common ground. We may worship different gods and love different people. We may have arrived here from different countries and speak different languages, but in Tampa, we are on common ground. Different stories, but a common hope, a common destiny, a commonality of purpose, a belief that our best days are yet to come, that our last chapter has yet to be written. In this place called Tampa, built by the immigrant families that once lived on this land, in this park, named for a mayor who became a voice for those that did not have one, and in doing so, changed the course of our history, common ground. This city, our city, where it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, what matters is that you are a Tampanian. I want you to know this. Progress is never easy, but it's always possible. This time next year, there will be a new mayor and a largely new city council. Choose wisely. Elections have consequences. Choose the politics of hope over the politics of cynicism. Choose boldness over timidity. Choose vision over venom. You know, I've got more yesterdays than tomorrows as mayor. But there's one thing I know for sure, that our future has never been brighter, that our hopes have never been higher, that our vision has never been clearer. Seven years ago when I asked you to join me on this journey, I told you it was time to give Tampa its wings, that it was our time, that if we pulled together, if we worked together, if we stood together, that there was nothing that could stop us. I believe that now more than ever. Tampa, we are becoming everything that we aspired to be. Now let's finish the job and finish strong. Thank you, Tampa.